Today we venture off into randomness as I show you some of the cool stuff that I have found at thrift stores or on eBay. And today we're going to look at three different awesome items. The Jazz Drive by iOmega, slides and slide projectors, and strange video and audio tape formats. So, stay tuned. Our first random find is the iOmega Jazz Drive. Now this particular one was designed for use with Macintosh computers but could also be used with a PC. The reason it was for Macintosh is because it had a SCSI connection on the back. Now uh, I didn't just uh, say a curse word or uh, call you a bad name but SCSI is a interface that uh, offered really really fast uh, response times and and data transfer times of course we're beyond that now but uh, this particular unit like the zip drive which was a magnetic tape based disk uh, this actually has a hard drive on the inside of a cartridge so uh, this particular one is a one gigabyte uh, cartridge but they made uh, two gigabyte cartridges as well so this particular unit here is a two gigabyte jazz drive and what you do is you place the disk inside of the system and it will spin up the disk and allow you to save your data and this one actually came with what's called the jazz traveler which allowed you to hook this SCSI interface up to the parallel port of your computer or actually the the, uh, the printer port of your computer so that you could connect this device and use it on a PC or a Mac. So uh, let's go ahead and throw in the cartridge and you can see how that works. So you slide your jazz cartridge into the front of the unit and we'll hear it gear up here. So there we are, our jazz disk is ready and we can start saving some files to it. Uh, this whole kit that you see here, I purchased for, guess what, $3, $3. So somebody really didn't like this unit anymore and it was time to go. So um, I guess the people at Goodwill didn't know what they had, but uh, this is a really cool old product. I do have a zip drive. I also have a click drive what is that? C L I K, a click drive. Um, I've also reviewed a click MP3 player. So, I Omega had some really cool stuff. They also had a backup tape drive known as the Ditto drive. So we got a a full line of amazing and innovative products that came in from the I Omega Corporation. And if you're like me and you've been around computers for a long time, you know that uh, this stuff was really cool and very expensive in its time. So pick up a jazz drive wherever you see them sold and uh, save one or two gigs of data on removable cartridges and you can even write on them what's on them and you can um, play them back. Isn't that cool? A long time ago in the not so distant past we didn't have things like Twitter and Facebook and Periscope and other things to share our vacation memories with our friends with all right we had to go and buy film put it in a camera and then after we'd taken our pictures pray that they turned out drop them off at the developer and then back would come something like this it's a little bitty slide and you can see there's a picture in the middle that's projectable so you could do slides or you could do color prints now if you did slides the goal was obviously to bring them back and share with your family. So you would set up a projector just like this one. This is the ANSCO, ANSCOmatic, or, or I'm sorry, the GAF ANSCOmatic 680. Set up this projector in the living room, the family would come in and you would watch thousands of boring pictures for hours on end and pray that it would hurry up and be over with. But uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, like nowadays, we share, as I mentioned, through social media. Uh, in the early 90s, you could have these slides put on CDs and play them in your Kodak CD player, Kodak Photo CD player, and then share them on the television, which was about the same, sitting around watching still pictures on a TV. But uh, 
what was the resolution like? The resolution was amazing. These slide photos uh, hold up after years and years of storage. The ones uh, that are on this tray were like 1960s when they were photographed and they look just as beautiful today. Um, and I'm going to show you that here in a minute. We're, we're just going to kind of very quickly now, don't lose me, we're very quickly going to see what it's like to have a slideshow with a slide projector using slides. So let's take a look and see what that's like. Here is my slide projector all set up and ready to project. So just to show you the quality, here is a picture of a beautiful landscape of some sort. It might be Arizona or somewhere around in the... Uh, southern United States where there's lots of desert and uh, very very pretty turned out very nice you can see it has rich color and uh, it's fun to get these slides and see like old cars and stuff um, one of the slide types that you might see out there are what is called souvenir slides now unfortunately souvenir slides fade over time so if you hold them up to the light you'll notice like this cave shot here it's a very very tall and wide frame slide but as you can see the the picture is just awful i mean it's clear but it's all red the blues and the greens have faded off of the slide so keep your eye out for those not always a good deal almost looks kind of scary doesn't it so this was a slide that i took as a kid and it was taken with a i think it was a 128 camera and uh you could get slides for uh, smaller more compact cameras as well so that was a friend of mine when I was a kid. And there is Luke Skywalker. So a lot of Star Wars action figures that are out there, kind of older ones hanging around, have a slide built in. And if you happen to find one of those, you can put those slides in a slide projector and show them on the wall. Pretty cool, huh? Last but not least, I want to show you some tape formats that I've run across lately. And in the future, I might showcase these individually, but for right now, we're just going to, we're going to preview them. So this first one is a ordinary audio cassette, but there's something very cool and special about it. Now, most audio cassettes were encoded with Dolby B, as in boy, noise reduction. This one was encoded with, let's take a look, see if you can see it, Dolby HX Pro S noise reduction. This was encoded with the last incarnation of noise reduction formats that were introduced by Dolby Audio. And this one plays in very rare players, in my experience. I've had one Dolby S tape deck, and it's on my channel, and it was a pioneer. But at the time, I did not have this cassette. It would have been great to uh, demonstrate that for you. But uh, yeah, so... I'm not sure how easy it is to find these. I actually found this out by accident that this was Dolby S noise reduction. So, very, very cool. Now, right here, you're going to see an ordinary VHS tape, right? Ordinary VHS. So, I want to put that on the screen here so that you can compare the size of some of these other cassettes that I'm about to show you. This here is a CVC cassette. Now, this is a video cassette that was introduced by Technicolor. It's very similar in size to the 8mm videotape format, but it was, in fact, its very own portable format. So, uh, I'd never owned one of these before, and I found some online that somebody was selling and wanted to pick one up, and just in case I run across one of the players one of these days. So, again, CVC, you can research that online, CVC by Technicolor. The next one is the V-Chord format. It is the videotape that almost looks like an 8-track tape, at least from the side here. Doesn't that look like an 8-track tape? And uh, this particular videotape format was introduced by Sanyo, Sanyo V-Chord. And uh, as you can see, the tape is actually smaller. The cartridge size is smaller than a standard VHS tape. So uh, do a little research on that one, the V-Chord videotape format. The next one is also a videotape format, and this thing is gigantic. I might have to move something out of the screen there, out of the way. Yep, I did. Here it is. This is the Quasar Great Time Machine video cassette tape format. Holds 120 minutes of uh, video and audio. And I'll open this up so we can see it. 
This cassette is gigantic. Huge. All right. It's almost like U-Matic. If you've ever heard of that format, the U-Matic tape format. So you can see it uh, is quite a bit bigger than a VHS tape. And the uh, the tapes themselves, or the, uh, the reels themselves, are actually stacked one on top of the other. So you've got your take-up reel and your supply spindle stacked on top of each other. And uh, the tape uh, window is uh, over here on the side. See, it says, do not open. That means open it, okay? Yeah, that's what that means. So uh, I'd love to find one of these VCRs just to be able to watch some old uh, material that was recorded on it. There's a little card in here with it that says uh, what this person recorded on it. NBC News Special, 1981, The Royal Wedding, CBS News. So it, it is a great time machine. It's, it's like going back in time when you're watching these old tape formats with stuff already on them. Pretty sweet, huh? All right. Uh, the last one I have is also an audio tape format, or the last audio tape format. This is the RCA tape cartridge, and it is a gigantic audio tape cartridge that has reel-to-reel -reel tape inside. So again, it's audio only. You could record in stereo, and just like the compact cassette that we saw earlier, you can record on one side, flip it over, and record some more on the other side. So this was a proprietary format. There are pre-recorded tapes out there that are recorded on the RCA tape cartridge format as well. So you can research that one. This one will take you all the way back to the 1950s. And this was a course, course this is of course, a Scotch quick load cartridge. Pretty sweet, huh? I like it. I want to find me one of those one of these days. And then lastly, uh, last week when I went to an antique mall, I found a pre-recorded Super 8 millimeter film. And this particular film has a little documentary on it about Clint Eastwood. It's called Outlaw Josie, and it's just a little behind the scenes movie. Now, just like that red slide we saw on the slide projector earlier, a lot of these old films like this, because of the way they process them, they have faded over time. So instead of a black and white movie, you're watching a red and white movie. But this is a sound Super 8 movie, and it has a uh, magnetic stripe soundtrack on it. You can see the audio tape that's been glued to the side of the film, and you can watch your movie like that. So before the days of home video where anybody could actually, well, most people could actually afford a VCR, you could watch these little audio uh, and film tape formats that you'd find at your local, uh, usually they were found at uh, like a, a camera store, for example, right next to the projectors. So anyway, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you enjoy this little trip back in time with uh, all these crazy formats and didn't really have enough to, to make an entire uh, video, again, of each one of these individually but I thought I would include it all in this video today. So if you've enjoyed this, do some research online. There's probably videos about these formats here on YouTube. And uh, please subscribe, share this with a friend, and tune in next time, and we'll, uh, we'll see another tape format that you might like. It's reel-to-reel -reel videotape. That's right. Videotape that's on a big reel from the 1970s. So I hope you'll join me for that one. And thanks for watching.